viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. The proverb, health is wealth, has become a reality in the post-pandemic world. The grim realities that India faced during COVID's second wave in 2021 was a wake-up call to many in India's power corridors. A resolve was taken that India would never again face such shortages and work began on war footing to get the health of the country back on track. Let's see how India's remarkable ongoing development in the healthcare sector are reaping dividends. The COVID pandemic confirmed the long-standing rule of governance that a prosperous country is one with a healthy population. India, already in the process of implementing changes to make the nation healthier, has doubled down on its efforts to create a robust healthcare infrastructure after the pandemic took a massive toll on its population. The states and federal government have been working hand in hand to improve healthcare in the country and give individuals living in even the most remote areas of the nation access to all levels of healthcare. As part of the initiatives undertaken to improve healthcare at all levels in the country, Prime Minister Narendra Modi recently inaugurated the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Ames Bilaspur, a premier level medical institute come hospital equipped with ultra modern facilities in the country's northern Himachal Pradesh. Ames Bilaspur cost approximately 170 million USD to build. The hospital is equipped with 18 specialty and 17 super specialty departments, 18 modular operating rooms, 750 beds and 64 ICU beds, which will greatly increase the quality of medical care in the area. Under the Pradhan Mantri Swastya Suraksha Yojana scheme, many new AIMS facilities are being built. So far, the establishment of 23 new AIMS have been approved under the scheme. Of the 23, the seven AIMS in Bhopal, Bhubaneswar, Jodhpur, Patna, Raipur, Rishikesh and Bilaspur are fully operational. OPD facilities and MBBS classes have started in another seven, while MBBS classes have started in another five more institutes. The dynamics of the Indian healthcare industry are significantly changing as a result of the development of healthcare systems in the most isolated regions of the nation. India endeavors to improve all aspects of its healthcare system, from primary healthcare centers to hospitals providing tertiary treatment. The country allocated 11.28 billion USD to the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare for the current fiscal year. It is also planning to introduce a credit incentive program worth 6.8 billion USD to boost the country's healthcare infrastructure. India has all the necessary requirements for this industry to flourish exponentially, including a sizable population, a strong pharmacy, and well-developed medical supply networks. Telemedicine and remote healthcare will also bridge the gap in health access between urban and rural India. For example, the National Health Mission is a program wherein the government aims to provide universal access to equitable, affordable, and quality healthcare services that are accountable and responsive to people's needs. Today, the availability of services following the creation of the National Health Mission and the creation of policies which detail the involvement of both the public and the private sector and the role that they play in a congruent manner to benefit the population of India has been heartening. India's consistent efforts to provide its citizens with quality health care have already begun to pay off. Infant mortality in India fell from 66 to a little over 27 per 1,000 live births from 2000 to 2022 and life expectancy at birth increased from 63 to over 70 years in the same period. India is one of the developing countries with the highest healthcare expenditures and this trend is anticipated to accelerate in years to come. 
In the past two years, Indian Healthcare has shifted its attention to innovation and technology, and 80% of healthcare institutions intend to boost their investment in digital solutions. The Indian Healthcare system is on course to rank among the top in the world, further enhancing Brand India's reputation as a global leader. Moving on, everyone can see the effects of climate change. Numerous areas of Nepal and India's northern Uttar Pradesh have been swamped by untimely rains, claiming thousands of lives. Nepal now faces a difficult undertaking as it already struggles with inflation and many political squabbles. Meanwhile, the Indian authorities have dispatched several rescue teams to evacuate the stranded people in nearly 50 villages. Several areas in South Asia have been massively hit by torrential rains, with Pakistan bearing the most of the brunt. Floods and landslides in Nepal's Bhardia have claimed over three dozen lives, while over a dozen people remain missing. The government has deployed rescue teams, including the army and the police, to search and rescue the victims. Flash floods and landslides are a common occurrence in the mountainous terrain of the Himalayan nation, especially during the annual monsoon rains between June and September. However, untimely October rains brought an unprecedented hazard to the residents of Nepal, hundreds of whom became homeless with no sanctuary to seek food and shelter. <laughs> Meanwhile, several parts of the India's most populous Uttar Pradesh state were also inundated by flooding which killed around 20 people last week. Heavy rain during the extended monsoon season caused rivers to overflow and engulf local villages. Hundreds of them were saved after the timely dispatch of rescue teams. However, hundreds of others were still marooned as incessant rains gave little time to react to the situation. हमारे ऐसे 48 गांव हैं जो मैरूंड हो चुके हैं, तो इसलिए हमने NDRF की टीमें बुलवाई थी। यहां पर दो NDRF की टीम, दो SDRF की टीम और तीन फ्लड पीएसी की प्लेटून। The rainy season usually ends in northwest India in mid-September and clears by mid-October. Experts believe the situation is likely to trigger food inflation as heavy rainfall has damaged key summer zone crops such as rice, soybean, cotton pulses and vegetables just before harvesting. They also say higher food prices could prompt New Delhi to slap additional restrictions on exports of food commodities such as rice, wheat and sugar and potentially force the Reserve Bank of India to raise interest rates again. Meanwhile, hundreds of thousands of flood displaced people in Pakistan have for weeks been living either in open or makeshift tents set up along roads or on dry patches of land. Food and water are in short supply at most of them. Devastating floods in recent months have engulfed large swaths of the country and killed nearly 1,600 people, displacing millions of people and causing damage estimated at 30 billion US dollars. Moving on. The Hindu community is the second largest religious group in Muslim dominated Bangladesh constituting approximately 7.95% of the total population. In recent years, the minority Hindus have been facing persecution at the hands of hardline Islamists in the country, despite assurances of safety and protection from Bangladesh's Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Let's take a closer look at how and why attacks on minorities in Bangladesh are being committed. This demolished Hindu temple in Bangladesh's Kumila district is yet another illustration of festering extremism and intolerance against minorities in the country. 
Two Muslim teenagers were apprehended by locals for defiling the idol of the Hindu goddess Kali. Police suspect that both the teenagers committed this act of vandalism at the urging of radical Islamic extremist groups in the region. Another ancient Kali temple was targeted a day after the attack in the Kumila district. Multiple unidentified assailants, under the cover of night, broke into a Kali temple in the Janida district. The idol of Kali was found broken into several pieces. Kali Mandir, jete rathe rando kare, keba kara, eti ke bhang surpore, tar matha dur rastay niyege, anto to mandir theke dusho gaus duri rastar upore rakse, jeta amra jara sunaton dharma balambe yase, tadhe ridai ke atton to bethi to korese, Bangladesh Pradhan Mantri kaso amader binito abedon, ei nekar jano ghatonar shushto tadon to shapetke, aung bichar vibhagyo. These two incidents are the latest in a string of attacks on the minority Hindu community and their places of worship. Last year, after a fake news story of the desecration of the Islamic holy book, the Quran, in a Hindu puja pandal spread in the Kamila district. More than 100 Hindu temples, festival locations, businesses and houses were reportedly attacked after the incident, and there were seven fatalities. Fake news traveled fast, and the after-effects were all too real for these minorities in Bangladesh. The Hindu community has not been the only minority group in the country to be under threat either. A Buddhist monastery in the southwest part of the nation was also burned down. Furthermore, in October last year, a violent Muslim mob also attacked an International Society for Krishna Consciousness, Iskon Temple, in the country's Noakali region. Riches were stolen and the temple was desecrated. In March this year, another Iskon affiliated Rasha Khanta Jeev temple was also vandalized by a mob. In Bangladesh, radical Muslim groups have been allowed to grow unchecked, resulting in a continuously simmering deep seated anti Hindu sentiment. As was seen in the wake of the spread of the false story about the desecration of the Quran in a Hindu prayer area, the slightest provocation, real or imagined, is enough to bring anti-Hindu sentiment to a boil. The United Nations has rebuked the Bangladeshi government over these attacks and has called for an investigation into the orchestrated crimes against the Hindu minority community. Amnesty International, also noting the pattern of attacks on Hindus, condemned the government, saying that the state had failed in its duty to protect minorities. The world should take account of these atrocities which are being carried out and try to crack down on these kinds of activities in order that the peaceful and the friendly people of Bangladesh could lead a life with dignity, including the minorities. Several independent research groups found that social media was used as an effective tool to spread hatred against minorities in Bangladesh. Since 2012, there have been many attacks on religious minorities in Bangladesh as a result of online posts that spread misleading or false information. There has been a clear pattern to these attacks. A rumor is sparked that members of a minority group have disparaged Islam, and then this rumor is spread swiftly online. Recent studies have revealed shifting patterns in Bangladesh's Islamic majoritarianism, where being accused of committing blasphemy and atheism can have deadly consequences. For example, violent Islamists have murdered atheist bloggers. And a number of so-called blasphemous authors, cartoonists, publishers and bloggers have been forced to reside in exile. According to prominent representatives of many minority communities, the attacks on their homes and places of worship by Islamic extremists also have a financial incentive, with attempts to rob the minority groups of their land and possessions. While the Bangladeshi government claims that minorities are protected, little has been done to actually prevent these attacks against Hindus and other religious minorities from happening time and time again. Time now for Asia This Week, the stories from across the continent. Taiwan is bolstering its defences and steeling itself for the possibility of war with China as leader Xi Jinping readies to assume a third term in power and tries to achieve what no predecessor has done by taking control of the island. Xi has made no secret of his desire to make democratically rule Taiwan a part of the People's Republic of China, peacefully if possible but with force if needed, 
cementing his legacy in the history books. China's war games near Taiwan in August pushed tensions to their highest in decades, reuniting fears of conflict that have loomed ever since the defeated Republic of China government fled to the island in 1949 after losing a civil war to Mao Zedong's communists. While Taiwan has lived with the threat of Chinese invasion for more than seven decades and there is no sign of public panic at Beijing's bellicosity, government officials are alarmed and offer a stark analysis in private. Any war could devastate the global economy, given Taiwan's key role as semiconductor producer and potentially drag in the United States, whose President Joe Biden pledged last month to defend Taiwan in the event of any unprecedented attack by China. Last month, it reiterated a pledge to achieve peaceful reunification under the one country, two system model of autonomy used for Hong Kong, though that has been widely rejected by Taiwan. China has not come up with a timetable for resolving the Taiwan issue, as Chinese officials term it. But Xi said in his first year as president in 2013 that a political solution could not wait forever. Japanese firm Shimizu Corporation introduced a jack-up vessel named Blue Wind. It builds big windmills that produce electricity. The total cost of shipbuilding is $347 million. To celebrate the completion of its manufacturing and pray for its safety, a Japanese ceremony named Shinto was organized by the firm. At the end of the ceremony, a holy sacrament was also distributed to all the people. This vessel is a 500-meter wide, 142-meter long and has capacity of 28,000 tons. It is capable of carrying both large and heavy cargo. It prepares a big crane to guarantee the building of a big windmill regardless of the climate or the marine conditions. Additionally, it sails by itself without the help of a towing boat. This jack-up vessel has a huge challenge of building a big windmill at the coast of Toyama Prefecture in Japan by March 2023. Next year, in December 2023, it will construct 14 biggest windmills at Ishikawa Bay, Hokkaido. It has a generating capacity of 112 megawatts. Shimizu Corporation investigated most convenient jack-up vessel to build, big windmill, cost performance, and short-term overcoming bad condition on the scene. All these efforts are being made in order to contribute towards environmental conservation, and this vessel is capable of working not only in Japan, but all over Asia and the world. Kyoto is an old city in Japan, which is famous sightseeing and is visited by a number of tourists throughout the year. However, the tourist footfall in the city shrunk due to the coronavirus pandemic. However, after month-long curbs, the restrictions for foreign tourists have been eased now. Recently, a Tourism Expo Japan 2022 was organized in the city, where travel agencies and local tourism organizations put up their stalls to tell the audiences about their services. The travel and tourism industries of Japan are all set for a revival.全国旅行支援の開始や海外からの個人旅行客の受け入れ解禁あるいは短期滞在ビザの免除など、さらなる水際対策の緩和の見通しに関する報道がなされております。日本の観光産業がリスタートを飾る象徴的なイベントにして
The global travel industry is looking forward to a business revival. The trip with the new idea is expected to regain foreign tourists by spreading the hidden charm of Japan. Different airlines, transportation firms, travel agencies and hotels participated in the exhibition to convey the stories of their services. The global tourism industry is reviving slowly and steadily after the pandemic crunch. Moving on to India's holy city of Puri in Odisha state where 13 religious processions are taken out every year and one of them is Gosani Yatra which is also another name for Durga Puja. In the city, devotees take out a Gosani Yatra or chariot where different types of clay idols are worshipped. Unlike other places, the festival of Durga Puja is known as Gosani Yatra in India's eastern state of Odisha. In this festival of Puri, several big clay idols of my Mardini Durga are worshipped every year in the Ashwin month of Hindu Almanac, which usually occurs in the Gregorian month of October. Here the clay idols of Hindu goddess Durga or Gosani are worshipped in a peculiar manner. The Gosani Yatra is an indigenous cultural heritage of the city of Puri. The essence of Gosani Yatra has endured to this day despite cultural advancement and a notable change in how Durga Puja is observed throughout the nation. The concept of Gosani has several meanings. It means the associated Shaktis of the Supreme Goddess Durga who fought during her war with the demon Mahisasur. In Puri, it is believed that Kakudikai is the supreme goddess and the chief among the Ghosanis. She is considered as the goddess Durga herself and the representative of goddess Vimala outside Sri Mandara. हर जगह में मूर्ति भगवान की जो देवी मूर्ति है अलग-अलग बैठते हैं लेकिन हमारी जो परंपरा है चारों धाम से श्रेष्ठ धाम जगन्नाथ धाम जगन्नाथ में धाम में जितना देवा देवी मूर्ति है सब एक इकट्ठे बैठेंगे देव सभा होंगे तब जाके ये विसर्जन होती है During the yatra different types of other idols are also worshiped like Ravana lifting Kailash mountain Nagas and the demons Nagas are male figures who symbolize heroism in Akara culture of Puri They are shown to have a human head and a snake like lower body on the day of Ekadashi, a big diya is lighted. After watching it, devotees conduct the immersion of the idols. दो साल के बाद पवित्र गोसानी यात्रा हो रहा है, तो जितना साही ये मैं दुर्गा पूजा का मिल रहता है, वो मंदिर के सामने लाते हैं और देव सभा होता है, उसके बाद जो आर्टिफिशियल पॉन बनाया गया है मंगलाघट में, वो एक-एक करके विसर्जन किया जाता है इसीलिए हमारा जो पुलिस अरेंजमेंट है और जो आर्टिफिशियल फोन वो सब कुछ पहले से इंतजाम किया हुआ है और सब कुछ सुरकुर से हो रहा है द लोकल पीपल समटाइम से दैट घोसानी इज अ विकेट फीमेल स्पिरिट भूतनाथ इज अनदर नेम ऑफ लॉर्ड शिवा हु इज द लॉर्ड ऑफ स्पिरिट इविल पावर्स एंड गोस्ट्स सो इट इज बिलीव दैट दीस घोसानीज आर द शक्तिज ऑफ लॉर्ड शिवा द क्राउन Ornaments, jewelry, and the halo are made of sola and zari, which adds up to the beauty of these images. Immersed in the festive fervor, tourists could enjoy their visit to Puri throughout the year. It is festivals like these which showcase the magnificent culture and traditions in India. Hindu goddesses are worshipped in different manifestations in different parts of the country. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care.